Thanks for coming. The purpose of this talk is not to show you the best performing visible med lens ever made by e-beam lithography. Instead, we're going to demonstrate our high volume manufacturing compatible nano imprint lithography and etching based approach to visible med lenses. So just you've all seen this intro, but Moxtech was founded over 35 years ago in Utah. We have about 250 employees working in X-ray technology components and optical nanostructures. Our parent company, Nippon Kayaku, was founded over 100 years ago. It's a billion dollar company with Tokyo headquarters. Um, the Moxtech's optics fabs are all located in Orem, Utah. We have eight buildings with plentiful clean room space for high volume manufacturing. On the optic side of the company, we've been manufacturing nanostructures for over two decades. We offer a complete high volume manufacturing solution, including optical nanostructure design. Here are some example structures that we've manufactured, primarily wire grid polarizers and pixelized wire grid polarizers, though the focus of this talk will be meta lenses. Capabilities are listed here. Really, what sets us apart are our various uh, nanoscale lithographic capabilities including nano imprint lithography and also our etching capabilities. Again, all of our clean room manufacturing is located in Utah, though we have some high volume post-fab capabilities located overseas with our parent company. I'll be discussing our recent work in developing and manufacturing visible meta lenses. Uh, what is a meta lens? It's a flat meta material lens. The term meta material was uh, coined from the Greek word meta, which means beyond. So meta materials go beyond normal materials in the sense that the natural properties of the materials have been altered by sub-wavelength nanostructuring. So our wire grid polarizer is an example of a 1D meta material. So meta lenses are flat nanostructured lenses similar to a Fresnel lens, but composed of sub-wavelength phase shifting scatters. The scattered light has a locally shifted phase profile depending on the size and depth of these pillars, which reshapes the wave front. Here is an example of the phase accumulated after propagating a distance H through the metamaterial. The variable here is the effective refractive index, which is a complex function of the cross-sectional area of these pillars. And we can't typically calculate this effective refractive index easily, so we use a modeling software called rigorous coupled wave analysis. Um, to calculate the phase shifts for different arrays of uniform pillar size. And in that way, we build up um, pillar size or phase shift versus pillar size, a library. So the spacing between pillar size satisfies this sampling criterion, and we're at 250 nanometer periodicity. And this generalized Snell's law here predicts the refracted angle in the given region of the lens. Traditional lenses work by bending light rays based on Snell's law, but you can think of it in terms of delaying the wave front more in the center of the lens than at the edges to produce a converging spherical wave front. Or if this is the light source here, you can collimate a diverging wave front. In the metal lens, nanostructured dielectric material are used to introduce the phase delays into the incoming light wave front. So again, more nanostructured material in the center of the lens imparts a greater phase delay than at the edges, giving a converging wave front. The holy grail for metal lens work would be to potentially replace a traditional aberration corrected lens stack with a single spherical or best form metal lens, but that's a tall order. So even replacing a single traditional lens with a visible metal lens in volume would be quite an accomplishment. The metal lenses could also be used in imaging applications. For example, controlling the output of an LED or micro LED array, or collimating the output of a fiber optic. In many ways, illumination applications are the simpler and lower hanging fruit, but they aren't as exciting. In terms of imaging applications for meta lenses, one example would be a meta surface aberration correction lens, shown here. One can already see that a simple meta lens has a better quality focal point than a regular plano convex or a sphere lens, but more sophisticated aberration correction can be achieved by coupling a metal lens with a traditional lens. So this image here is a few silica singlet, which has both monochromatic and chromatic aberrations. Um, and this image on the right is after adding a metasurface aberration correction lens, and you can see the image is just much clearer. An application in medicine would be 
higher resolution, more compact endoscopes, and polarization imaging is another application that can be achieved when using asymmetric pillar size shapes like these uh, nano fins. Phase imaging for edge enhancement is another application with uses in microscopy and optical metrology. So we're here, here we're looking at one of these Air Force resolution targets. Um, and with left-handed circularly polarized light, you see a normal image, but with right-handed circularly polarized light, the edges of these images are highlighted. And there are many other imaging and illumination applications being pursued. Basically, anywhere you have a regular refractive lens, you could consider replacing it with a metal lens. MoxTech metal lens designs have certain manufacturing limitations, which are listed here. Others have used TiO2 for visible metal lenses, but our material of choice is niobium oxide um, because it still has the high refractive index, but has a lower extinction coefficient throughout the visible. It also has lower surface roughness and improved edge characteristics, so we can achieve higher aspect ratios. For near infrared metal lenses, we've used amorphous silicon and for Longer wavelengths, we use crystalline silicon, which etches really nicely. But for visible wavelength metal lenses, we use niobium oxide. As I mentioned, we use rigorous coupled wave analysis to generate a meta atom library of phase shift versus pillar size. From the following example, we constrain the design of a reasonable nanostructure dimension shown here. We have two pi phase wrapping, and we chose a hyperbolic phase profile to convert the incident planar wave front into a spherical one, ensuring a diffraction limited focus spot for on axis illumination. This is a small region of one of our pillars, uh, one of our designs where within a given zone, the pillars vary gradually, and then the abrupt changes in pillar size occur where there's this phase wrapping. Here are some example of silicon masters that we've made. The mastering process involves e beam lithography and silicon etch depth testing followed by e-beam writing the metal lens array, development and etching, and then SEM metrology. We then iterate with local biasing during e-beam writing to control, to control for proximity effects. After making the master with the proper dimensions, one can make many, many PDMS stamps, and then hundreds of wafers can be made per PDMS stamp. So that's how the cost is driven down despite the upfront laborious mastering process. You can print tens of thousands of wafers from one master. The nano imprint technology called substrate conformal imprint lithography or skill is used to generate the relief structure in the sol gel resist material. And here are some example of nano imprints. This is then used to etch the high refractive index material, and then the mass material is then used yielding the clean pillar structure. We actually use hard mass layers in between the nil resist and the niobium oxide, but the details are a trade secret. We have various inline metrology tools, including AFM, which is used to measure the pillar size after imprint. These are test structures, which we characterize to understand our print bias and print relief depth. We also have deposition and etch SPC using variable angle spectroscopic ellipsometry. And here are some examples of etched high aspect ratio niobium oxide pillars. Aspect ratios can be up to 12 to 1, so these are fairly delicate. But uh, after manufacturing, we can overcoat these to protect against handling damage. And the overcoat also boosts performance significantly, which I'll describe shortly. Here are example optical microscope images of fabricated metal lenses using the Kians microscope. These are fabricated on 200 millimeter diameter wafers, and we have demonstration scale and production scale mastering processes ready for various applications. So we can help to optimize and verify and optimize the design and then scale it to production with the high volume master. This slide presents a metrology of our 1D repeating test structures, which we call beam deflectors. They act like a flat blaze grating and serve as a proxy to gauge the lens refraction efficiency into the desired first order diffraction direction. We essentially use these to aid in process development. So these can be measured with the power meter or iris or with a camera image sensor as shown here. And the piece can be fit with Gaussians. And this is some data 
showing diffraction efficiency versus pillar height and diffraction efficiency versus overcoat type. The best results came from 800 nanometer pillar height and overcoat type three with average first order diffraction efficiency here of about 65%. The middle points are the mean and upper and lower points are plus or minus one standard deviation. Now, where does the rest of the light go? Obviously, uh, some will go into reflected modes, um, but the, um, there's still some signal in the unrefracted zero order shown in red, and also the second and higher orders shown here. There's about 8% of the zero order in this case, and 3.5% of the second order, and very little into the minus first order. We're looking at ways to minimize those unwanted stray light beams by improving our edge profile, but in some applications, the leakage is less criti critical. And I should mention that recently we've achieved 75 to 85% and even 90% first order diffraction efficiency by improving our edge profiles and adding anti reflection coatings. So we're getting very close to our phase review targets. This is a Medlens focusing efficiency metrology approach that uses collimated illumination and captures an image of the defocused beam. The intensity distribution is then decomposed into a best fit first order def defocused beam shown in orange, an unfocused zero order beam in blue, and the sum is given in green and closely matches the raw captured image in red. This approach showed a 61.5% lens efficiency. Again, these weren't AR coded, and so this was not fully optimized, but shows reasonable performance and demonstrates nano imprint lithography replication and etching of small feature sizes for visible metal lenses. Here we have overall transmission measurements of our one centimeter focal length, two millimeter diameter metal lenses, and we see a dramatic improvement when adding our overcoat with transmission exceeding 90% in the green and red wavelengths and average transmission in the 85 to 89% range. So we're seeing a 25, 30% boost when using our overcoat, which surprised us. Now this measurement used an integrating sphere and includes the zero order leakage and higher order focus beams. But again, we're not uh, AR coding these. So really there's very little reflective losses from the metal lens itself. Here are interferometry results for the one centimeter focal length lenses showing a near perfect wavefront, and that's uh, per our collaborator Excelitas. Those aren't our words. The focal length was also measured and that it's within 0.1% of the one centimeter target at 532 nanometers. The focal length versus instant wavelength has the expected behavior for a grading based lens, which is opposite to that of a refractive lens. <clears throat> Here's the focal spot measurement of our one millimeter focal length metal lens measured at 543 nanometers, showing approximately a 1.2 micron spot size, which is close to the fraction limited spot size for this F number. I should mention that the design wavelength was 532 nanometers and we measured at 543 and still saw a diffraction limited spot, so that's encouraging. Here's a, a two millimeter diameter F1 metal lens used as a fiber optic beam collimator. On the left, we have the raw fiber output. Here's with the metal lens. And the beam looks pretty good even. This is a, a filtered at 532 nanometers at the design wavelength. Even with the broadband illumination, it looks pretty good. It's not the most exciting application, but simple and of practical importance. This slide describes the modulation transfer function or MTF, which is a measure of image contrast versus spatial frequency, it can be gener generated by imaging gratings with varying pitch. High contrast here cor corresponds to good fringe visibility where the minima are close to zero and the maxima are large. Low contrast corresponds to poor fringe visibility where the high and low intensities in the image are compressed and more difficult to resolve. And here's an example of the MTF curve for different rays going through a theoretical optical system. The black curve is the diffraction limit, um, which is the absolute limit of resolution in a perfect optical system, and that can be calculated through modeling. So here's the MTF of one of our one millimeter focal length meta lenses measured on at trioptics on an image master HR system, which we have on order. Depth of focus was 46 microns, 
we don't have the diffraction limit curve for comparison, so we'll rely on our customers to provide specs and tell us what performance is good enough. We actually saw better MTF for a smaller metal lens with similar F number. This used slightly larger pitch and aberrations are also known to decrease with small metal lens sizes. You can see the contrast at 400 line pairs is improved by about 20%. And at 37 and at 200 line pairs, the improvement is about 37%. So again, this demonstrates successful nano imprint lithography and etching of small feature sizes for visible metal lenses. To further demonstrate the utility of our metal lenses, we used one as a macro lens attachment on an iPhone 11 Pro telephoto camera system. And this was done for the two millimeter diameter, one centimeter focal length lens, and also for a five millimeter focal length lens. We first had this modeled in ZMAX, and a paraxial lens was chosen here to approximate the metal lens. Below is the modeling without the macro lens. Adding this lens reduces the field of view somewhat from about 47 and a half degrees to 35 and a half degrees, but the full with half max of the ray bundles wasn't degraded or suffering. So basically, adding this metal lens. Uh, reduce the field of view, shorten the focal length, and increase the magnification. And that's what we saw when we went ahead and built these iPhone metal lens assemblies, which you'll be able to demo here shortly. Um, so we built these uh, iPhone metal lens assemblies and demonstrated the macro lens functionality. Here's a schematic of the setup. Here are images that we captured of a scratch dig transparency, a foreign bank note, in the cross section of a pumpkin stem. And this is a photo of our metal lens demo at the Photonics West booth, where we announced the first production scale visible metal lenses. This is an uh, example wafer with about a thousand uh, two millimeter diameter visible metal lenses on it. So in conclusion, we believe Moxtex developed the world's first visible metal lens production line. We've demonstrated high volume visible metal lens manufacturing processes that include metal lens design and mastering, nano imprint lithography with inline metrology, high aspect ratio etching and protective overcoat, beam deflector test structure metrology to gauge performance, and various metal lens final metrology approaches. Finally, we demonstrated metal lens imaging in a macro lens configuration for an iPhone 11 Pro and also a fiber collimator application. And with that, I should thank uh, colleagues and collaborators, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have.